start the world. It's a phrase I found back in 2011 while I was writing The Way of Men. It was in an article about Peter Fauna, the actor probably best known for his role in the film Easy Rider. He was at the Cannes Film Festival, and he said, I prefer not to use the words, let's stop something. I prefer to say, let's start something. Let's start the world. Now the context was a little strange and it was an odd statement, but something struck me about that, even then. There were all these men around me and they were always complaining about the changes of the world and they were saying, we need to stop this, we need to stop that. We need to go back to the way things were in the 1950s or the 1850s or the Middle Ages. You know, and it was all so negative. It was all trying to conserve something that was, you know, for the most part, already gone. Man's soaring and aspirational achievements, the greatest works of art, the most beautiful cultures that the world has ever known weren't created by saying no to something. They were created by saying yes to something. Because no is about stopping something and yes is about starting something. It's about creating something. It's about a positive vision. And that's what I wanted my book to be about and that's what I wanted to be about, no matter what. So I used it as the title of a chapter in The Way of Men and it stuck with me. It became a motto and a, a rallying cry and a defiantly, a cussedly positive approach to life. Don't waste time complaining about the way that you think the world is supposed to be. Focus on doing whatever you can, wherever you are, no matter what is happening, to create the world that you want around you. It starts with you. One of the classic self-help books out there is titled The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in it, there's this uh, little graphic that has been used by tons of people and it's been used so many times because it's good and it makes sense. And the basic gist of it is that if you focus on things that are beyond your actual control, your ability to, to influence, things like the news or things that are happening in foreign countries, uh, things that are happening to people that you will never ever meet or be able to change their opinion or whatever, if you're worried about all those things, then your actual sphere of influence and control is likely to decrease because you're not paying attention to what's close to you. But if you pay attention to what's close to you, to the things that you can actually control and influence, then your sphere of influence or control is more likely to expand because you're paying attention to the things you can actually control or influence. So don't focus on stopping or changing their world. Because I don't care what Coke or Pepsi or Nike or CNN or Starbucks tries to tell you or sell you. Unless you're a billionaire, you are probably not gonna change the world. Can you say something or, or write something or make something? Can you make some art or music that reaches out across a great distance and, and influences people's lives and changes their lives? Yes, you can do that. You can change individuals' lives, and that's great. But you're probably not gonna change the world. That's probably a little bit beyond your reach. That's probably a little bit beyond the resources that you have at your disposal but you can change your world. That's where you have the most power. That's where you can initiate change. That's where you can start your world. Even if right now, it's just you. And if it is, good, because that's easy. You only have to convince yourself. So start the world. Over the years, as I became more and more interested in symbolism and ritual, I started to realize that start the world implies cosmogony. The word world comes from roots that mean an age of man. 
Every mythical system is a story about reality, a story we use to organize the chaos of the world and the chaos of our minds. It sets up a poetic frame, and life without a poetic frame is just math. And in every mythical system and religion, there is a story about how the world started. It all starts with some void that is somehow empty and full at the same time. Something ends and something new is created from the ruins of it. And often, even in these myths, the world is created over and over again. An order comes into existence and for some reason that order becomes disordered or chaotic or undesirable. And that old order, that old way, has to be sacrificed to create something new. Odin and his brothers kill Ymir to make the world from his corpse. Zeus casts the Titans into Tartarus. When I conceptualize the idea of a sacrifice now, I think of it in terms of creation, not destruction. Every sacrifice, no matter how big or small, is an echo of some mythic sacrifice. Something is given and ended to symbolize the start of something new. The start of a new world, a new outlook, a new order, a new system. It's been almost a decade since I first read the words, start the world. They mean more to me now than they did then. Start the world is a call to action and ignition. It's a reminder to always be creating while others are waiting. It's a reminder to do what you can with what you have. For me, start the world is a little bit of magic. So, wherever you are, and whatever is happening right now, remember... And if you're not dying, you're living. You can make the choice to retreat or advance. You can try to stop something, or you can choose to start something. You can make the choice to start the world.